Hi, I'm Michael Correa, and this is Psych Exam Review. This is another practice question video where we're going to be looking at 10 possible questions related to research methods and statistics. So before we begin, I'd just like to remind you to try to use these questions most effectively. And the way to do that is first to try to come up with your own answer before you see the multiple choice options. So I'll pause briefly before presenting them, but you may want to pause the video and wait a little bit longer. And only then should you use the multiple choice answers. Now, for some questions, this will be a little bit harder because you won't know what options will be available, but hopefully you can have some ideas of what you're looking for before you jump to looking at the multiple choice answers. And finally, make sure that you also review any other unfamiliar terms that appear. These might be in the question, these might be some of the incorrect answer choices. So even if you know they're incorrect, you might still want to make sure that you're clear on what exactly they are. And there may also be some new terms or some unfamiliar terms that appear in the explanation. So I've written these questions specifically to try to cover as much as possible. And sometimes I'll introduce some related topics in the explanation that you should also be familiar with. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some research methods and statistics questions. Dr. Owens has developed a well-controlled manipulation which consistently influences responses in her lab though it is impractical in the real world. Her research can be said to have this low significance, low internal validity, low external validity, low social desirability, or low reliability. In this case, this would be low external validity. So external validity refers to how well results can be applied outside of the lab. In this case, lab results may be reliable and have high internal validity, but would have low external validity if they can't be applied to real life. Statistical significance in psychology is generally accepted to be at P less than or equal to 0.5 p equals 1, p is less than or equal to 0.05, p is less than or equal to 0.02, or p is greater than 0.05. And this is c, p less than or equal to 0 0.05. This is the standard cutoff point for statistical significance. However, it's very important to note that this doesn't mean that the hypothesis is necessarily correct. It just means that the data observed is unlikely to occur by chance. Which of the following is not a role of informed consent? Is it to describe any risks of the study? To describe any deception used in the study? To describe the voluntary nature of participation? to acknowledge agreement to participate, or to provide an overview of the tasks involved. And this is B, to describe any deception used in the study. This is not one of the purposes of informed consent. So informed consent is meant to ensure that participants are aware of the tasks that they might do and any risks, and it emphasizes the voluntary nature of participation. Participants may still be deceived about the true nature of the study or the group that they're in, and this would not be revealed until the debriefing after the data has been collected. In order to match the population at her school, Carrie ensured that her survey collected 55% of responses from women and 45% from men. This is an example of So is this random allocation, random sampling, naturalistic observation, opportunity sampling, or stratified sampling? And this would be an example of stratified sampling. In stratified sampling, researchers attempt to match the distribution of some characteristic in the population. So that might be gender, it might be ethnicity or income groups, they try to match what's in the population in their sample with the goal of making the sample representative of the population.
which measure of central tendency might be best to use when describing the income of individuals in a country. Would it be the range, the median, the mean, the standard deviation, or the p-value? This would be the median. So when comparing individual income, the median is frequently used to reduce the influence of extremely high values or outliers on the mean. So in the case of income, some people have very high income, and this would lead to a high mean value that would be misleading, while the median, which is the middle score, is less affected by those extremes. As a participant, Sean isn't told whether he's receiving a medication or a placebo pill. Which of the following does this aim to reduce? Does this reduce statistical significance? Does it reduce ethical considerations? Does it reduce observer bias? Does it reduce demand characteristics? Or does it reduce construct validity? And the purpose of not telling Sean whether he's getting the medication or the placebo is to reduce demand characteristics. So these are situations where the participants change their behavior based on the situation or based on their perceived expectations of how they're supposed to act. So keeping participants blind to the conditions that they're in can help to reduce this. Now we can also blind data collectors to the conditions and this can help to reduce observer bias. And if we blind both participants and data collectors, then we have what's known as a double blind study. Which correlational coefficient shows the weakest relationship between two variables? Would it be r equals positive 0.1, r equals positive 0.7, r equals negative 0.6, r equals negative 0.9, or r equals positive 0.4. So the weakest relationship in those choices would be r equals positive 0.1. So the correlational coefficient represents the strength of the relationship between the two variables, and it's strongest at positive 1, which is a perfect positive correlation, and it's equally strong at minus 0.1, which is a perfect negative correlation, and it gets weaker as it approaches zero in either direction. So we're looking for the answer choice that's closest to zero, that would be the weakest relationship, and in this case, that was positive 0.1. Researchers designed an experiment to see if practicing meditation before a math exam improved scores. Some students meditated for 10 minutes before the exam, well, others did not. In this case, meditation is the is it the dependent variable, the third variable, the inferential statistic, the independent variable, or the confounding variable. In this case, meditation would be the independent variable. So the independent variable is the variable that is manipulated by the researchers. So participants are meditating or not. And this is independent of any other cause. It's the researchers that cause this. And this is done in order to see if there's an effect on the dependent variable. In this case, that would be the math exam score. We want to see, does the exam score depend on whether or not you meditated? The average distance each individual score is from the mean is known as the is this the p-value, the correlational coefficient, the mode, the mean, or the standard deviation. This would be the standard deviation. The standard deviation is calculated by comparing each individual score to the mean and then computing the average of all of those differences. So it tells us how far each score is on average from the mean. 
Dr. Jones has chosen to measure aggression using a standard scale. In his study, the score on the scale would be the blank for aggression. So would it be the extraneous variable for aggression? the control for aggression, the operational definition for aggression, the sample for aggression, or the independent variable for aggression. So the score on this scale would be the operational definition for aggression. So an operational definition refers to how a researcher has chosen to define a particular property that's being studied. In this case, the score on the scale is what Dr. Jones is using to represent aggression. So he wants to measure aggression. You can't measure it directly, so you have to measure something. He's using the scale as his measurement. And then that is meant to represent the idea of aggression. And how well a definition represents the property is referred to as construct validity. Okay, so that's the end of these 10 questions. I hope that you did well. I hope you were able to get many of them correct. Make sure that you review anything that was difficult or unfamiliar, and that includes the incorrect options and any terms that were also used in the explanations or in the questions. And I uh, hope you can share any questions or suggestions you have for future review videos in the comments. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out the hundreds of psychology tutorial videos on the channel that might help you to understand some of these concepts and terms. Thanks for watching.